Hello everybody and welcome back to the Python basics. Right now what I want to show you is a really important command that we will use in our backdoor creation which is the raw input command. Now what that command does is basically it allows us to actually give users an input for a certain command or certain number or something like that. Now I will show you what I mean by that. So let's say we have a variable called number one. So number one it's easy to realize that we will be storing a number in this variable. And we want to, for example, uh, take an input from a user that is using our code. So how do we do that? First of all, we want to specify that this number will be an integer. So what we want to do right now, uh, we want to type here int, which stands for integer. And what we want to do is open up our brackets and type the function raw underscore input. This raw underscore input will actually ask a user to input a number for us. Now, it could be a string as well, but since we specified right here integer, it will only accept an integer value uh, to be stored in number one variable. So right here we want to open up another bracket, add a quote sign, so double quotes, enter a number, then we put two dots, then close quotes, and then close two parentheses. The first one parenthesis is closed for this one and the second parenthesis is closed for this one. So this command basically means that we will actually store an, uh, a given number from our user. So they will get prompted enter a number and then they specify for example 3, press enter and then our number 1 variable will have a value of 3. So let's press enter right here. And as you can see, this is what our users of code will see. So they get prompted enter a number and let's say we type here 8. And that's about it. So right, right now if I just type here number 1, you will see that number 1 has a value of 8. But let's say for example, they type here str, which is a string. This will produce an error which will say string is not an integer basically, since it really isn't. So we, we need to make sure that we receive an integer. Uh, from the user, but if we wanted for to example receive a string you would just need to use the same here command Just specify here instead of int specify string or str which stands for string and right here Of course you will not be specifying enter a number just enter a string and as you can see now if the type str Type object string is not callable Let me just see what do they mean by that Or I don't think you need to specify anything for this string. Let us just see. So if we delete this right here, str, yeah. For string, you only can specify the raw input. So let's see number one now, what has, which is a li little bit ridiculous name for a string. It has a string value of str, which is what we specified. So let me just clear this a little bit so you can see it better. Then I will type the command once again. So you don't get confused with this. So let's see, this command will be used once we want to get a string input from a user. And this command will be used once we want to get an integer input from a user. Now also, one thing that you need to know is basically, uh, as a hacker or as an ethical hacker, it really doesn't matter the, the, your code basically doesn't matter if it is well written or not, uh, what matters for us is that it actually works and it doesn't break all the time. So our exploits, our backdoors, they all need to be coded however you want to code them, but with the main point is don't break, they shouldn't break. So if you for example upload a backdoor on your victim PC and it breaks, it is not a really good backdoor. You want to be able to execute commands as long as you want and you want to be able to execute some of the tasks that your backdoor can perform without any errors. So that is the only thing that you need to focus on as an ethical hacker is to create the backdoor without actually producing any errors during the execution of those backdoors. So we saw in the previous video how we can give a value to a variable and right now we saw how we can get an input from a user. So let's actually make our first program that is not in the Python interpreter. So how we do that? First of all, what we want to do is exit this. So how you exit it is exit and then two brackets open and closed. And this will give us back our root uh, terminal shell. 
what we want to do is first of all let's see where we are so pwd we are in the slash root directory and right now let's create our directory for python programs or you can call it any way you want i will just call it python programs and let me change my directory to there right now let us actually type here nano python 1.py which is our first python program and right here you will get an output of a simple nano window which we saw a bunch of times so here we can write anything we want uh, make sure once you open a program that you add the .py extension which stands for python program if you do not have those, this .py extension you will not be able to execute your python program so the first thing what you want to do right here is specify this right here so at the first line uh, you want to specify hashtag then uh, exclamation mark slash user bin python this is something that you need to include in all of your programs since it is referring to the python uh, directory where all the libraries are so for example if you were to import a different library that comes with python you will not be able to use it if you don't specify this path right here so remember to always include this in your python programs as you can see right here if i just CT control o this enter and then control x and i go to the user share python and just type here ls you will see that there are python programs right here so you need to specify this path in your python program so let's go back to the root python programs and then nano uh, python 1.py right now let us see what we can create so what we will do right now is uh, for example let's create a program that will ask an input from a user so it will ask for for example a number or it will ask for two numbers and then it will actually multiply those two numbers so let's do that it is rather simple so let's say number one equals so we saw in the previous command integer raw underscore input then we specify enter first number two dots closed uh, double quotes you will see that this uh, string right here gets um, basically gets outputted in green format which means this is a string uh, we also need to add two additional brackets close brackets for these two right here so that is the first command the second command we want to ask for number two so equals integer raw input enter second number this is rather simple so it is easy to understand and right here what we want to do is result equals number one and then this uh, star sign then number two which will multiply so this star sign right here is used to multiply two numbers in python program so as we can see we will get uh, the result sign out uh, we will get the value of these two numbers multiply uh, stored in the result but right now if you were to for example compile this program or make it an executable and then run it you would not get any output right here since what we need to do right now is actually type here print result which will print the value or stored in result for us so just control o this x or pardon me enter and then control x and if we just type here ls you will see we have our python program here now you will not be able to run this un, uh, until you make it an executable so how do we make python program editable we make it with chmod plus x so plus x stands for executable we already covered the, all of this and then python 1.py we just enter that and just type here ls once again and we can see that our program is now in green format which means it is executable and how do we run it we run it with basically just dot slash python 1.py and as we can see right here it will ask us for first number so let's say we the first number is 3 enter the second number the second number is 4 and we will get 12 as a result but let's actually make this even a little bit prettier so nano python 1.py and let's actually print right here so we'll do it with the same command that we covered in the previous video so the result is then two dots then as you remember we need to specify the percent sign and then s for the or pardon me then d for the number then we close the quotes and after that percent result 
which is our integer number, which will actually give us the value uh, of result instead of this percent %d right here. So if I save this once again, so control O and then control X to exit, and then I run once again, so 3, 4, and you will see the result is 12. So that is rather our first Python program. This is how you can make it an executable. And this is how we can do the most simple program that we covered for now. In the next video, we will start off with the, some of the loops that are in Python. For example, if loop, while loop, for loop, and all of that, which is really important for us and which we will use in our coding section of Backdoor. But for this video, that will be it. And I hope I see you in the next one. And take care. Bye.